Hello again, everybody. This is Mr. Everything, and I'm coming back at you with another Wargaming and Miniature video. In this video, we're going to continue on with our Warlords of Nowhere boot camp. In this boot camp, what we're doing is we're going over each of the rules and kind of showing you exactly how to play the Warlords of Erewhon. Okay, we've already talked about We've already talked about the basics, like what you need to play the game, uh, the different types of units, the turn sequence. We've also talked about the order dice and movement. Now that that's out of the way, let's start getting into the meat and potatoes, like combat. First thing we need to talk about is shooting. All right, when it comes to shooting, that includes everything like bows, crossbows, thrown weapons, fiery breath, basically anything that's not directly hand-to-hand. -hand. It could be thrown rock from a giant, things like that. So models can shoot if they're armed with missile weapons or provisioned by nature or arcane steady with their equivalent. A unit can shoot when given the advanced order or the fire order. Units with advanced order complete their movement, then they shoot. Artillery units can only shoot with fire order, because you can't move them and shoot them. And that doesn't apply if they're mounted like on a ship or on, the, on a vehicle or a monstrosity. Units can also potentially shoot as a reaction or during an exchange of missile before fighting hand to hand. That's described, yeah, that's gonna, we'll get to that later, but it's worked out exactly the same way. Models shoot only once, unless they've got multiple range attacks, like dragon fire. If model has multiple range attacks, this appears as a special rule on the model stat line. Models would be turned to face their targets. These guys all have throwing spears. These guys all have bows. How, how do you target someone? Well, shooting is worked out unit on unit. One unit shoots at another unit. So you place the order by them. Let's say I give fire. Check the range. All models in the shooting unit must shoot at the nominated enemy unit that is being shot at. All the models in the shooting unit must shoot at the nominated enemy unit where they can. Any unable to do so don't shoot at all. Models can shoot so long as they can see at least one model in the target unit. So, hypothetically, let's say this is a castle wall. It was super tall, and it was here, but only one of these guys was peeking around the corner of this castle wall. They can still shoot that unit, but they're all going to hit him. And there is the option to split your fire in exceptional situations, and that will be explained in splitting fire. Okay, can I see? A model can shoot an enemy so long as it can draw a line of sight to at least one model in that unit. If a model can't draw a line of sight to at least one model in the unit, then it can't shoot. So, let's reverse this. Let's say they are trying to shoot them. Remember, this is a castle wall. It's super tall. I guess I could use a building. Maybe it's like this. This guy can shoot, but they can't. So, line of sight is blocked if... A shooter can't draw a line of sight through the base of another, another model or through the body of a large model such as a monster. A shooter can't draw a line of sight through the formation of another unit, even where there might be a gap between the models. In reality, our warriors are in constant motion and a unit in front of the shooters is in the way. A shooter can't draw a line of sight through any buildings, hills, solid objects such as boulders, well, massive boulders, a shooter can't draw a line of sight through any obstacles or other terrain features that the players have previously agreed will block line of sight. So like let's say you and I agree that this wall is 20 feet tall, even though we don't have the model here, then you and I will know that's going to block line of sight. So figures inside your own unit can shoot, like this guy would not be blocked by his friends, but if there, let's say there was two separate units. Remember there's the one inch gap rule. You got to keep them at least an inch apart. This unit cannot shoot at them. Well, actually maybe he can't. No, he can't. Maybe he can shoot him and that would be the only one. But they can shoot and they wouldn't be able to shoot. You would think you can shoot through your own friendly units, right? 
Nope. And you also can't shoot through the enemy units either. Now there is the large special rule. A shooter is allowed to draw a line of sight over the, over the top of any regular size model or through the formation of a unit because the target is significantly taller. Like let's say there was a giant behind these guys. They could still shoot the giant. There's also shooting from behind an obstacle. So let's say I've got a unit of seven and some of them are behind the obstacle. Models sheltering behind an obstacle less than the height of the model itself, such as a wall or modest hedge, can draw a line of sight over it and shoot targets beyond, even where the obstacle has otherwise agreed to block line of sight. This is an obstacle that would block line of sight. Like let's say you had a dog behind it or a halfling, they might be that might block their line of sight, but because these men are tall enough to be to see over this, it doesn't block their line of sight, and they would be able to shoot. Now, if they were to shoot at them, because they're the ones sheltering behind the obstacle, they would get the benefit of the cover. Now, monster breath is actually measured from the head and not the base. There's monstrosity crew, there's artillery, uh, when shooting at artillery, shooters have line of sight to the weapon and or any of the crew. Now, if you're shooting artillery, you, and if it's a cannon or a stone thrower, you draw the line of sight from the gun itself. High ground, like a hill. If you want to include high ground, like tall buildings or rocky spires, you have to agree that they can overlook another feature. In general, it's a good idea that models position on high ground are allowed to draw a line of sight over other models or maybe a low feature like that. Range. Different weapons and different kinds of missile attacks have different ranges. Most weapons have a short and a long range. Some artillery weapons have an extreme range band as well. And we'll see the weapons and armor section in page 46. Let me just jump to that. Okay, now in the rule book on page 49, or, or the quick reference sheet, you have ranged of missile weapons like bows, longbows, crossbows, javelins. Okay, so these guys, because they're equipped with javelins, have a, a short range of 0 to 10 inches. But the bows have a range of 0 to 10 for short, but 10 to 20 for long. Okay, so you measure the range. It's not necessary to measure range for every individual that's shooting. Measure the distance between the closest model in both opposing armies or units. So it looks like these two are the closest. So I would measure between that guy and that guy, and I'm getting seven inches. Well, actually, just under seven inches. So they would both be in short range. So hypothetically, hypothetically, if I had guys like this, Maybe even him all the way up, all the way back there. Remember, they're all an inch apart. Maybe this guy's more than 10 inches. It doesn't matter. You measure from the closest to the closest. If these two units are in range, all of them are in range. Okay, so now you roll the hit, and you're basically just checking to see if your shot hits your opponent. Okay, so we go to orcs. Orc archer, right? They have a bow. Their accuracy is four. So so what you do is you take six guys, so that's six dice, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, and you roll them. Now we're trying to hit the accuracy of their weapon. If it is at long range, they get a minus one. Extreme range, minus two. Aimed shot, you get a plus one. And you get an aimed shot if you don't advance and fire. If you just fire, it's considered an aimed shot. So you get a plus one. Large target, like a giant or a dragon or something, would be a large target. And exchange of missiles is when you, you close into close combat and you shoot your weapons as a last minute thing. You get a minus one. And then enemies in a, a building... Like if they're in a building like that, they get minus one. So I'm looking for a four or less to hit. Okay. These two, did, well, that was a five. These two did not hit. But the two, the threes, and the four hit. Now in some situations, units become difficult to hit. 
like if you're a bowman and you're shooting at fast cavalry, you have to re-roll your hits. Now, if you're entitled to re-roll misses, if a shooter is entitled to re-roll misses for whatever reason, then any re-rolls of misses must be taken first to establish the total number of initial hits. Any obligatory re-rolls of hits will be applied to these hits. Now, re-rolls can never be re-rolled. So, <laughs> so what that means is re-rolled hits, you only do it once. And re-rolled misses, you only do it once. You don't re-roll hits and then re-roll hits again. Even if you have two things that would make you able to re-roll hits. Okay, some things that might cause a re-roll. If the unit is down, you have to re-roll hits. If they're running fast, you have to re-roll hits. If they're sprinting, hits have to be re-rolled or some special rule. Okay, so now you've got your hits, right? He's got four hits because these guys don't have any re-rolls. Each hit is allocated to individual models in the target unit by the player who has been shot at. So I could say I want them to hit these four guys back here if I want it. And you have to spread them out. I can't say all four of these hit that one guy. I have to tr spread them out as evenly as possible. Now, if some of the shooters are using weapons that affect the target differently, you got to roll them with like a different colored die. Like maybe you had a unit with five bows and one machine gun. Then, I'm exaggerating, then the machine gun would roll that and the bows would roll these. Now, once you've been hit, you get the op... Now, that doesn't mean they're all dead. They have an opportunity to resist the damage. Okay, so now these guys are considered peltists with javelins and shield. You can see they've got a shield. So that raises their resist from five to six. So they have a resist of six. Now I take those dice that were allocated. Now I could roll individually one at a time just to make sure exactly which model died, but that just draws the game out. So just roll your five resists. And remember, I need a six or less. Yikes. I've got, okay, I got two saves, a fail, and a fail that cannot re-roll. Remember, ones and tens can never be re-rolled. But either way, I've lost two guys. Now, because I allocated the hits to these four, two of them have to die. I'm just going to say these two guys in the back are dead. Now, in some cases, models that fail the test to resist can re-roll the test, specifically models with the tough ability. And that's usually the leader. Leaders usually have the tough ability. So it's up to you to decide if you want to put the hit on your leader, risking him failing his re-roll, or putting it on like the, the, the regular warriors. Because if your leader dies, your morale drops. Because your leader is there to give a higher command value. In the case of the Peltists, the command would either be 7 or 8 for the leader. But in the case of the Orcs, it doesn't change. They both have a 7. <laughs> so kill the Orc leader doesn't matter. But he, he does have the tough ability, so you'd lose that. And there are various cover bonuses. So like you get a plus 1. Co now cover applies to your resist roll. These rolls, the 9 and a 10, still would have failed. Because even with their 6 resist, the wall would have bumped him up to a 7 maybe. Actually, a wall is 2. So it would have bumped him up to 8. Still, that doesn't affect doesn't help. So here's some examples. Vegetation, soft cover, plus one. Rocks, walls, and other hard cover, plus two. Fortifications, plus three. All right. When a unit is shot at and hit, whether you resist or not, it takes a pin. So I'm going to use my little wooden block here and give that unit a pin because they shot, they hit. Even if I roll all successes on my resist, they would still take a pin. So chariots and monstrosities when they're hit and they fail damage rolls, it goes to like damaging opponents and things like this on the body of the monster or on the chariot. They could take additional pins for that. The usual rule is that only one pin is inflicted regardless of how many hits are scored. But some ranged weapons inflict more, like dragon fire. Okay, so now there's something called overhead shooting. Like stone throwers, and siege machines lob a shot high into the air and come crashing down on your enemy. Some large monstrosities, like giants, can also hurl huge rocks in this. So we work out overhead shots in a little bit different way. They're not common, 
in most forces, but some include them. Overhead shots have a minimum range of 10 inches, so you can't shoot at short range. You need a three inch template. I got a little three inch disc right there. So take the template and place it on the center over any model in the target unit. So you have to center it on one of the models, right? So I'm gonna put it right on that guy, right? He's right on top of this guy. Make an accuracy test for the shooter. Overhead shots suffer an accuracy modifier of minus two. So let's say the Peltis are doing the shooting and they've got an accuracy of five, minus two for the overhead, so they're looking for threes. And remember that artillery cannot move and shoot, so it doesn't get the aimed bonus. So I'm looking for a three. Remember, I'm only rolling one die. So if, you, if I successfully hit, it would land right there. But because I failed, it lands off target, but it still might hit something. Roll a d10 and move the template in the direction shown. Okay, so when you're looking at a d10, uh, however it lands on the ground or whatever, it always has an arrow, right? So let's look at three, right? I have the arrow pointing straight up. So if I was to roll that there, you see how it's got an eight going this way? So it would be eight inches in that direction from him. So it would land right there, missing everything. But I could have landed on these guys, possibly. Or I, if I rolled low enough, like the deviation was low enough, I could have just went, you know, like this direction. And poof, poof, poof. Okay, so a template doesn't necessarily hit the targets that are under the template. If it lands on the target, roll the dice on the weapon to determine how many hits it. It could be a D6 weapon, it could be a D4 weapon, and that's how many hits are allocated to them. You must allocate the hits to the models under the template before allocating to other models in the unit. You still have to spread them evenly. So you definitely would have, like if it landed on target, you would definitely have to put at least one of the hits on him and then the other ones he could spread wherever he wants. Any unit in the, mod in the unit can be hit, but the ones under the template have to be hit first. All right, now in, in Warlords of Erewhon, they allow you to shoot blindly with overhead weapons. So you could fire at a unit that you as a player knows is on the other side of this obstacle, but your miniatures wouldn't know this. You can, you're allowed to shoot at them anyway with a stone thrower and you roll one die, and if you roll a one, it hits. If you roll a two through 10, the rock flies off the table, no deviation. And if you roll a one, it lands somewhere near the target, but you still roll deviation. So you still roll the die and you move it that many inches around to see if it actually hits them. And you do that twice. So it has like a double deviation. So as an example, let's say we don't see these guys because they're behind a giant hill and I nominate this the same model and I and I luckily I roll a one. That means it's going to hit somewhere in that area. Then I roll. It looks like six inches this way. Okay, so the first point is like right there. Right, so I'll just put that die right there. And then you roll again four more inches that way. So it lands right there. And that's how you do indirect fire without line of sight. They call it shooting blind. Now splitting fire. Last rule when it comes to shooting, not counting melee shooting. Monstrosities with crew, if they have multiple range attacks, they can shoot at multiple different targets, but only if it's given a fire order. If you give it an advanced order, it all has to shoot at the same target. Units occupying towers. So if a unit is in, is in a tower, then it can also split its range attacks when given a fire order. All right, now that's the end of shooting. And in the next chapter, we're gonna be talking about close combat and then after close combat, we'll talk about break tests and reactions. All right, I'll see you then.